You can start when you're ready, Justine. That's just my question. Oh, Tina Tahitato, um, Kanui Timahi, Mahana, Tina, Irungi, Tina, uh, Kopapa, Otera, Ara, Te Korero, Tino, Fakahira, Hira, uh, No Kraitiana, Hemahi, Nunui, um, or Tina Toho, uh, Ara, Kote Wahaka, Ko Matariki, Tina, um, Norera, Raroi, Tina, Mehi. Kia koto, um, kia koe i Kraitiana, um, he mahi nunui, kia kaha, kia maia, kia manua nui, mo tēnei kōrero, ki oku nei, uh, tēno whakahirahira, um, he kaupapa uh, nunui, um, he kaupapa pōhonu, kia tātou, uh, ko ngai bāli tēnei, nō reira kanui te mahi. So, kia ora everybody, just um, warm greetings to you from Ōtipoti. Um, the wind is certainly blowing today. So we've sort of got a hundred kilometre gales down here. Um, I happen to be living on the harbour, so it certainly blows down here. I uh, just want to acknowledge that it is Matariki. Uh, we are in a new year, um, and it's a really good time to start looking forward and looking at important kaupapa um, that will guide us for the year. And I definitely think this is one of those. And then just acknowledging um, Koraitiana, who's our kai kōrero for today. Um, so just before he starts, I'll just do a quick karakia, um, then I will attempt to read a very short bio and then I'm just going to hand it over and he can do his mahi mahi, which will be way more interesting, I'm sure. So kariri atu te taitimu, kariri mai te taipare, ka tuku atu te kino, ka hoki mai te pai, tauana te aroha marauroa ki uta, tauana te aroha nui ki tai, kia tia tia ki ngākau, ka hai hai a te kiri, ka hiko hiko te waira, Wairua, uhi wero, tau mai te maudi, au me hui e. Taiki e. So, kia ora everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce a fellow member of the Māori Leadership Team for um, our hākua, uh, Kraitiana. Um, today he is talking to us on um, Māori data sovereignty, which is a very, very important kaupapa. Every single person who is part of or aligned with us, Paul, will be dealing with some form of um, data, which to us is a tauma. Um, the more often we can put a human face on that data so that we all remember that we are dealing with people and their whakapapa and their lives and their whau order and their modi order um, is a really good day. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Kraitiana Tayuru, um, who is a member of our Māori leadership team for this core. Um, he has lots of um, research and advisory roles, governance roles. He has his own company, Tauru and Associates Limited, so I'm sure you can Google that and um, commission his services. Um, as you would have seen in the email, he is an invited member of the Office of the Prime Minister's Chief of Science Advisory Expert Panel on Artificial Intelligence and Health. He's a legislated expert member of the Trademarks Advisory Committee, Digital Identity Trust Framework, Māori Advisory Group, the Ministry of Health Chief Kanga Expert on Associated Reproduction. I'm sure he's absolutely a member of the Māori Data Sovereignty Movement as well. So, um, Kraitiana, over to you. Oh, kia ora. Tēnā um, koutou uh, katoa. Justin uh, ngā mihi uh, mō tō um, kōrero, um, aroha and tēnā iata. Um, I'll just quickly just jump straight into the presentation with, um, yeah, things are a little bit, um, we're short on time, so I will just get started. So, now I'm assuming everyone can see the presentation. Uh, right. So I, I always like to start off uh, Māori Data Sovereignty talks with this whakatauki, which was created by um, a, a kaumātua who I had a lot of respect for. So he, he um, created this whakatauki back in 1984, but to me, it's still very applicable to Māori Data Sovereignty. And it talks about returning the authority to the of the tribes to the tribes, of the sub-tribes to the sub-tribes and the families to the families and the individual sort of individuals um, as we did um, pre-colonization. So this is quite important for me 
and for Māori data sovereignty because it recognises and reinforces the fact that um, Māori data sovereignty is not just about iwi, it's not just about hapu or fano or just about individuals, it's about the collective. And we need to actually understand and be respectful that um, some data is iwi data, others is hapu data, uh, Māori organisation data and individual data, um, as most of you, or I think as a lot of researchers will have probably more individual um, data. Um, so just uh, some background. Um, so pre-colonisation, uh, Māori, we had full guardianship of all natural resources um, on land, air, and in our oceans. Um, yet by um, 1860, um, through confiscation, you know, we only ha held about 80% of our land. And then by 1939, um, about 9%. And today that sits at um, around 4% or perhaps just a little bit less. I'm in the South Island where um, I fuck Baba too and Justine and others. Um, we had um, we, we lost 99% of our natural resources um, due to um, dishonesty um, and illegal purchases. So today, in, in terms of um, Maori data, the, the New Zealand government currently own and control uh, more Maori data more iwi data than all Māori collectively own and have access to. Um, so this makes um, the, it's quite important for Māori data sovereignty to be considered and implemented. Uh, and quite and quite simply, I mean, the, the Crown um, has recognized, been recognised to have breached their commitments to Tetiriti in terms of um, our natural resources and recently in terms of Māori data. I also just wanted to point out that there is no one Māori worldview. So please don't, um, if you hear a different perspective from what I'm talking about, please don't think we're um, at odds or I'm wrong or the other person's wrong. Um, it's just that this is um, the Māori world, you know, the Teo Māori, we have our own um, perspectives. And this is usually um, often from a colonial point of view, um, it, it's suspected that all Māori think the same, but we don't. Um, we are all... Um, Especially today, we have a, a myriad of different um, backgrounds and um, socioeconomic um, backgrounds. So just in case people don't know, so Māori society is made up from waka or canoes, which brought our um, ancestors uh, to New Zealand from um, Asia and Pacific Islands. Um, so currently, we, we're made up of um, iwi or tribes, and then from the tribes are made up of hapu or sub-tribes. Uh, we have multiple uh, marae or meeting houses, and we all have family groupings. It's also important to understand that there's over 110,000 Māori um, who do not know who their um, tribe is. So I, I refer to those people as Todahiri or urban Māori. Now, because they don't know who the iwi is, um, it does not mean that Māori data sovereignty is not applicable to them, because it is applicable to them, um, as I hope you'll see through here. And we also have the term mana whenua, so anyone who's brought up um, in or anyone from a geographical location, um, we refer to those people as mana whenua. So to get started, I, I just want to make it clear, I mean, Justine said at the beginning that our data is a taonga. So for anyone who's not certain uh, about what a taonga is, it's basically anything of significance, whether it's physical, spiritual, um, intangible, matauranga, it's papa. Um, and it's all um, um, covered under Article 2 of Te Tiriti, uh, where uh, the, the Crown basically says that we can have rangatiratanga over our own taonga. So again, throughout this presentation, I will show and prove uh, that Māori data is a taonga. Um, so the, the Māori perspective, the ATL Māori perspective of data is very different from a, a Western slash scientific perspective of what data is. Um, so it's important that we understand that there are differences in opinions here. Um, we have our, our traditional stories speak of um, data, how um, one of our deities, Tane Mahuta, um, travelled up um, into the, um, the upper realms of the world, up in the skies, and brought back three baskets of knowledge. Uh, so for many iwi, not all iwi, but many iwi, this is our, um, our whakapapa um, too. Māori data. 
Um, it's also important to just to understand that um, in the Waitangi Tribunal, um, a claim was made against the, the New Zealand government, um, arguing that Māori data is a taonga, um, despite the Crown's best efforts um, arguing against um, three of us um, experts, we, the Crown agreed with us. Um, it's also, in my experience, um, I, I've found that there's constraints within academia um, to actually fully talk about what Māori data is. Um, and it's also important to understand that, you know, um, as I said before, you know, Māori, we have different views. Um, some have um, religious views, um, whether it's um, traditional Māori religious views or whether it's Western um, religious views. So um, again, so this is just a perspective of Māori data. So um, pre-colonisation, pre uh, our data um, was on our, in our walls, in our marae, um, in our songs, in our haka, um, in our, our stories, in the landscapes. Um, for anyone who um, has um, children at school or maybe in universities, there's quite often a cultural narrative um, to do with the, the land and the natural resources where your um, the buildings are. So that's more of our Māori data is in our natural resources. Um, so um, again, it's just important to point out that you know we have always had Māori data. We've always looked after and nurtured our Māori data, um, but it was not always just digital and it wasn't just written. This is one perspective of uh, um, what Māori data is. So at the top of the screen, there's um, kōri slash eel. So some iwi, some individuals believe in um, a supreme deity called eel. Um, other iwi um, believe in that, that there was nothing. And then, so if we come around, uh, again, just generally speaking, uh, Ranginui and Papatua Nuku were the, the parents of Hane Mahuta, who brought our data to the um, to the earth. Uh, Tane Mahuta had a number of um, children, um, and then a, a number of those children became deities in um, various aspects of um, different um, Tonga species, different geographical locations, etc. Um, so, and then all of our data, as I said before, came for, came on a canoe or a waka, and th those canoes and waka had ancestors who formed our tribes, our sub tribes, our families and then us as individuals. So this is our um, one uh, perspective of the whakapapa of Māori data. And so um, this was used in the Waitangi Tribunal to um, prove that Māori data is a taonga, and this was just one explanation of why data is a taonga. Um, the, the government has been changing its views on um, Māori data. Um, so in 2018, the, the previous data steward um, recognised that Māori data is a taonga. Um, then a few years later, um, she was replaced by a, a different data steward who didn't um, believe that data was a taonga. And then um, more recently, the Waitangi Tribunal claimed uh, recognised data as a taonga, and the New Zealand government has been investing significant amounts of money into uh, protecting Māori data and recognising Māori data sovereignty. Uh, we've got some of the, just based on phone calls from recruitment agencies and colleagues, um, all of the big crown agencies are um, actively um, looking at employing and creating Māori data sovereignty strategies. Uh, it's important to understand too, I mean, it's not just Māori who are talking about data. Uh, the United Nations um, have made the statement that Indigenous peoples have inherent sovereignty over all data collected from them, about them, and their resources. And so later on in this um, presentation, I'll, I'll go through what other Indigenous peoples are doing as well. Um, sometimes I always, or sometimes I get these questions, well, why, why Māori data sovereignty? What, you know, what, why should we consider it? So I just want to point out that in 2023, the government passed this new Digital Identity Services um, Trust Framework Act. Uh, this um, recognises Māori data sovereignty, it recognises data as a taonga, and so this is legislation um, to manage and protect personal information about New Zealanders with the added protection of Māori data sovereignty. So as researchers, this is quite important. 
Uh, we've got the Statistics Act from 2022. Um, again, applying principles of tetiity to the statistician when it comes to Māori data. Um, I, I would suggest that um, as researchers, I think it would be good if you um, are familiar with this act and um, voluntarily adopt those same principles. Um, the, the Privacy Act um, was updated in 2020, which also um, regard, uh, considers Māori data and tetiity obligations. Moreover, we have constitutional document, uh, constitutional considerations in New Zealand. So in the far north, we have New Zealand's first constitutional document, Te Whakaputanga, or the Declaration of Independence. Um, so that was signed five years before Te Tiriti, and that gives Māori um, rangatiratanga over their, um, over their tonga, in the same way as Te Tiriti does. Um, and it's also important, which we'll talk about later on, is the Hawora Report, um, the, the Waitangi Tribunal Health Report, um, recognises the tetiriti principles um, that apply directly to health. Um, the um, tetiriti or Waitangi is, is um, now in legislation, and I think yeah, anyone who works in government is will know that they're bound by tetiriti and, and the Act in just about all their engagements with Māori. Um, and if the, uh, if the government or academia breach tetiriti, there's the obligation or there's the opportunity to um, take um, the, the party to the Waitangi Tribunal for um, a non-binding decision against them. Um, also, New Zealand um, signed up to the um, United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in 2007. Uh, sorry, we, we signed up in 2010, uh, three years after most of the rest of the world did. Um, each one of these articles here, um, 1 through 46, relate directly to the protection and recognition of Māori rights, Māori sovereignty rights with data. And again, the New Zealand government has invested a, a huge amount of resources into implementing um, UNDRIP, and we'll, um, I suspect we're going to see some um, outcomes of that very soon. So the, like I said before, the, the Y2522 Waitangi Tribunal claim was made um, against the Crown by um, a number of Māori organisations um, in regards to the Trans-Pacific, um, the TPPA. Um, so basically the Crown or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, didn't believe that Māori data was important and didn't, um, it wasn't a TTDC obligation. So um, the claim was made. Um, there was myself, um, Associate Professor Donna Cormack from Auckland University, and um, Portoa um, from Rotorua and myself, uh, and uh, Professor Jane Kelsey from uh, Emeritus Professor from Auckland University. We, we um, were the expert witnesses and argued um, that the Crown breached its tetiriti obligations in regards to Māori data and electronic commerce. So the, the tribunal um, agreed with us that Māori data is a taonga, if it has Matauranga Māori. So um, from a translating that into a Western perspective, um, if the data is identifiable, it's, it has Matauranga Māori, so it's a, it's a taonga. Um, so the, the, the tribunal didn't really believe that anonymized data that couldn't be direct, couldn't be pointed back to people or peoples was a taonga. But it's still a major one. So th this is, um, as I said, this is um, the definition of Maori data that was used in the tribunal. Um, and from a so from a Western scientific perspective, you might say, well, this is information. This is, yeah, you you you, you probably say this is not strictly data. So my response is, yeah, that is um, th what this on the screen now is a Matauranga Maori view of Maori data. And I, I also understand the Western scientific um, definition of data and information and knowledge. And I think um, we, we just have to appreciate and understand each other's uh, knowledge systems. Uh, we have another a major claim, the Y262 claim, uh, which is still um, being, the New Zealand government still trying to ascertain how to meet the recommendations from that claim. But that, that claim also um, directly corresponds to Māori data. 
Um, so um, we have these consultations going around the country right now on how to um, recognize the, the Waitangi Tribunal decisions on this. And so again, I think um, as researchers and academics, it would be good to keep an eye on the Waitangi 62 claim and see how this will apply to, to Māori data within your own research. Uh, another consideration is um, in 2022, the Supreme Court um, in the, the Peter Ellis case ruled that tikanga Māori is New Zealand's first common law. So this is significant in terms of Māori data sovereignty. Um, so from a, from a Māori perspective, um, Māori data and any digital system that Māori data sits in is a taonga. So it's not just the data, it's the whole database, it's the system. Um, it's because, I mean, and again, as, as just saying said at the beginning, you know, our data has Modi, it has Whakapapa, um, it is a taonga. And so this has a number of significant impacts for the future, uh, in my opinion, um, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence, which is a, artificial intelligence is off topic, but I'll stick to the topic. So because tikanga Māori is um, New Zealand's first common law, there is the possibility that we could see Māori data being granted legal personhood, uh, much like we did with the, um, the forests up in Tuerawera, um, the lake, uh, the river in Wanganui, and um, the mountain, Mount Taranaki in Taranaki being given um, legal personhood. Um, so using um, tikanga Māori and matauranga Māori, um, personhood was applied to those um, geographic locations. Um, so uh, in my opinion, um, it's only a matter of time until we see Māori data being granted legal personhood as well. So uh, but what's Māori data sovereignty? So again, it's really important, Māori never ceded sovereignty to the Crown. Um, some of us, when we were at school, we're told that Māori did cede sovereignty, but um, I think, yeah, it's, yeah, we're a lot more educated, and so we never ever gave, uh, we never ceded sovereignty. So Māori data sovereignty just refers to the uh, inherent rights and interests that all of Te Ao Māori have in relation um, to um, to their data, how it's collected, interpreted, managed, used, etc. And so that is an Article Two Te Tiriti right, where the Crown gives Rangatiratanga to Māori over their taonga. Um, anyone who talks about Māori data sovereignty and doesn't mention te tiriti uh, um, will have um, Indigenous data sovereignty mixed up with Māori data sovereignty. So it's really important, te tiriti um, is guaranteeing Māori data sovereignty. So these um, six principles of Māori data sovereignty. Now, I, I basically took the, the standard principles which I thought could, have, you know, could be more Indigenous and um, updated them to the, the following. Uh, so this was also done in consultation over a, um, a two year period, um, speaking with um, over 150 individuals and groups around the country. So rangatiratanga, um, or authority over data, um, basically means that all, all aspects of um, te ao Māori, whānau, hapu, iwi, rōpū, etc. have inherent rights to um, have control over their data. And the jurisdiction um, means that Māori data um, should be stored in New Zealand and not overseas. Um, so that means that we're protected by New Zealand laws, not international laws. And it also means that Māori have um, a rangatiratanga or self-determination over the data that they believe um, is re relevant to them, that empowers and that creates self-determination. Um, whakapapa or identity. So all, again, like we've said before, all data has a whakapapa and a modi, um, a modi being a life force. Um, so this means that all Māori data should have um, accurate metadata. Um, it, it, should, it should say where the data came from, uh, which geographic location, the hapu, the iwi, et cetera. So th this um, allows Māori to um, basically, again, um, code and um, categorize what is important to them um, in terms of the data, and also to be involved with the future use and storage of, of data and what and to be involved in um, 
the, the long-term storage and to be involved with what sort of consequences, um, positives, negatives, data governance, et cetera, and basically to protect against Māori being harmed in the future. Um, Whanaungatanga is about balancing the rights. So from a Western perspective, you uh, many of you would say that you own the data. From a te ao Māori perspective, um, you are simply the kaitiaki or the, the guardian of the data. And individuals' rights, in some instances, may be overturned um, in favour of um, group rights. So uh, it may be that an iwi um, has uh, rights over an individual rights in terms of data. And uh, we saw that um, playing out with the COVID-19 data uh, with um, in the High Court with, um, uh, with Whanau Water. Uh, accountabilities again it's um, this is about um, dissemination um, and having intergenerational accountability back to um, our whānau, hapu, iwi and um, marae. Collective benefits um, this is about again just ensuring that Māori um, are co-designing the, um, the ecosystems uh, that there's collective benefits for the future um, and that we can use that data to ensure that Māori um, have a better future, whether it's um, employment, whether it's creating um, new AI systems, new um, identifying uh, gaps in the health system, et cetera. Um, so um, a manaki tanga, or um, this is about having respect for the, for the data. Now, this is a twofold respect. One is respecting that the data is a tonga and that you, you know, you're not the actual owner of the data, but then by also um, using the data in a good way. I mean, we know I mean, the statistics, uh, statistical data can be manipulated to either look really good when it's really bad or look really bad um, you know, without um, being explained properly. So this is where we need to actually consider how we're going to use that data. And it's also important to ensure that there's full um, prior informed consent of data so that Māori know what's happening with the data that you have. Um, again, so, you know, kaitiaki tanga is um, over ownership. Um, it's, it's important to remember that the data that you have is only ever on loan um, from Māori. Uh, it's important to consider kaitiaki tanga with your ethics approvals, uh, ethics applications. And to understand that some some Maori data should be um, have restrictions or, or make tapu, um, so um, that's to protect. Um, so again, this is to say you might have hapu rights to data, uh, and you, you then you also need to have individual rights to data. But the, they're conversations you need to have with um, the people the people's data that you're working with. Um, it's important to also remember that. Um, I, I'm talking about Māori data sovereignty. There's also iwi data sovereignty. Now, these four iwi have um, got public documents online um, explaining how they interpret their sovereignty. Um, so if you're working with different iwi, it, 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 it will pay to ask them first what their um, iwi data sovereignty principles are before applying the general principles. Um, so... Most of you will hopefully uh, would be aware of the Way 2575 High Order Report. It's the Waitangi Tribunal um, claim against the um, in, um, health inequities, which resulted in the overhaul of the health system. So there was um, five new um, tertiary principles came from that report. The first one uh, was Tino Ranga So, th so this is a, a new principle for health researchers. Uh, it's not a general data sovereignty principle, it's um, only for health. So uh, we are, as researchers, you need to recognise that Māori have tino ranga, tira tanga and mana motahaki in the design, delivery and monitoring of health. Um, so in equity, again, in, um, there's international um, principles of data equity principles. Um, so this um, is also a totality principle that you, you should be bound by when using Māori data. Uh, active protection, again, this is um, an obligation for you to recognise Māori data sovereignty principles and to um, ensure that Māori health outcomes are being met with that data. 
or you can or you use that data to identify that there's gaps. Um, options in terms of data, um, just basically ensuring that your data um, is properly resourced for um, for Kopapa Māori um, reasons. So one example could be that um, you have a um, you have lots of data, um, but then collect it, you know then changing your data sets to recognise hapu and iwi affiliations, and then um, recognizing whānau affiliations and then allowing whānau to share their data with other whānau. Uh, it's not um, it's not a, a normal Western practice, but from a, um, a Kaupapa Māori perspective, this could help in terms of um, a number of diseases and other health issues. Um, it's also important to be, to be prepared to work uh, in partnerships with other organisations. Um, I know as health researchers, you have a significant amounts of um, data, um, you, whether it's um, genetic data or other health data. Uh, and there could be a time when Fatawara and other organizations may come knocking on the door and say, look, we want to um, and, you know, um, have better health systems and you know, we don't have this data, can we partner up? And I think that's quite important to be able to co-design uh, with Māori and those partners. Uh, for anyone who's really serious about Māori data, Kopapa Māori um, and Māori data sovereignty, here's six um, um, frameworks which I, I highly recommend. Um, the, the first one is more for in the lab when you're using um, genetic uh, genetic data. Um, I know I saw a few um, co former colleagues from the Christchurch Heart Institute um, online before. Um, so some of these principles were rolled out there a few years ago. Um, everything that I'm talking about today in great details in the compendium point two. Um, if you're trying to understand um, to, how, to, how to apply to TDT with um, AI and algorithms, um, point three. Um, number four, there is more for the crown agencies, but I think there's some really good, um, really good ideas in there for universities and researchers. Um, there's a, a tikanga test by um, Sir Hilary Mokul Mead. If you're not sure. If something is ethically right with Māori data, um, you can run through the Māori uh, the tikanga test. Uh, I, I'd recommend doing that tikanga test with uh, um, someone who's culturally competent who can, um, yeah, who can go through that. And I think most of you will be aware of um, Kapa Far by Sir Mason Jury. It's a pretty much the standard. Um, and there's a number of other um, health frameworks which you can um, adapt to data as well. Uh, this is just a Māori difficult uh, ethical um, framework. Um, again, if you're familiar with these tikanga terms, it's, uh, I think it's always good to use, um, apply these um, tangas across all um, Māori data that you have. Um, so internationally, I mean, we have, um, yeah, internationally, Indigenous data sovereignty is a hot topic. Uh, so this is just a, um, a snapshot of some of them. Um, the, and again, the, the thing that makes Māori data sovereignty unique to Indigenous data sovereignty is we have um, te tiriti, we have the Supreme Court ruling, we have uh, he whakaputanga, um, we are Indigenous um, so data sovereignty more relies on broken treaties um, and the fact that um, Indigenous peoples have have their own um, authority over their own lands in some places. So uh, the, um, the definition, definition of Indigenous data sovereignty is about the um, Indigenous nation's right to govern and um, basically, yeah, have, have fully govern their own data. Um, so, and, and more recently, we've, we've had the um, Indigenous data sovereignty move from Canada and America um, down to um, Australia, and even um, the um, Pacifica in New Zealand have um, created principles. Um, so, this is um, again, if you're working with Australian Indigenous peoples, it's I've just put this here just so you know it's not just Maori. Uh, and that our principles are different to our, our cousins over in Australia. Um, this is um, a copy and paste um, from Moana Research. Um, I'm not sure if anyone from Moana Research is on this call, so I'm, I'm just, I just took a copy and paste to um, show that there's more to data sovereignty than just Māori. Um, in terms of um, using data, um, collecting data, um, in my experience, the universities usually have a um, an IP policy um, that people agree to. 
um, in, in order to actually recognize Māori data sovereignty in its full, um, it, it's important to um, maybe try and be a little bit more flexible and realize that Māori, you know, Māori um, data is a taonga. And, you know, remembering that um, kaitiaki tanga, rangatira tanga aspects that are given to us. Um, if you're creating new data, whether it's medical, uh, medicine, or yeah, anything else, um, consider that any new data or, or any new IP um, be shared. The IP is shared 50-50 between the, the research organisation and uh, mana whenua. Uh, it's also um, kaitiaki licences are quite important. I'll discuss those a little bit more. Um, there's been a push um, by some academics and some government agencies that Māori data um, should just be under a social licence. So a social, a social licence contradicts um, Rangatira Tanga. Um, it contradicts our tikanga Māori. Um, so I, I just suggest that you um, to stay right away from social licences and open data. Uh, open data is just basically another land grab where um, those who promote open data for Māori data basically just want to take our data and ignore our rangatira tanga. So the Kaitiaka tanga licences um, were developed by Tehiku Media um, in the far north, and they're, they're quite successful. So I've just adapted their licences to recognise the Māori individual, um, hapu, iwi, um, Māori in general, and um, organisations. So using Tehiku Media's um, license details, um, this is basically a four key um, principles in the license. And again, I, I believe that um, ac academia and other researchers can adopt this into their um, current regimes, their current licensing and IP regimes. And by doing so, will truly reflect the principles of Tehiku. Uh, for uh, any data administrators, um, there's um, sets, these um, data sets here to help integrate into um, your um, into your databases. Um, it, it's important to re um, remember that mo many Māori identify to more than one iwi. So more often than not, I see data sets that only ask for three iwi at most. So if you can, uh, I, I, you should have that um, open to um, as many iwi as people can. And again, recognizing data sovereignty and marae sovereignty, including marae and hapu um, fields is quite important. Um, um, applying Māori data sovereignty in the, in the workplace, uh, I think it's important to have commitment statements, um, committing to these, um, to legislation, to constitutional documents is quite important. And then explaining how you commit to each one of these and making them public. Uh, will help Māori, um, yeah, help your partnerships with Māori. Again, ma uh, Māori data must be stored in New Zealand um, at all costs. Um, and where possible, have um, partnerships with the mana whenua where the data centre is. Um, so, for example, there's a um, big data centre being put up in Auckland at the moment. And I understand there's um, discussions with iwi um, and those data centres at the moment. And it's really important to use a New Zealand company when storing your data in New Zealand. Because by using an American company, you um, become um, obliged to American laws, um, such as the Patriotic Act, Stored Communications Act, and the Cloud Act, which basically um, ignore New Zealand privacy laws. Uh, it's important that within your organisations, um, if you could have a Māori data steward or um, someone on a on a governance slash advisory board um, who can promote and um, represent Māori data governance, I think is really important. A again, um, uh, anything in the, in the labs that you have, it's important to um, consider tikanga. Um, I, I won't go into this in detail, but there's the primary tikanga associated with biological data is the, um, the ho being kaitiaki tanga, uh, being be kaitiaki, uh, using karakia, understanding what a makutu is, Modi, um, self sovereignty, whakapapa, um, and what wairua is. Um, it's important to store Maori um, samples separately and to identify what they look like. Uh, and there's a full guidelines um, in um, Tikanga Tafi to Tikanga Ho. And again, some of this was um, implemented at the Christchurch Heart Institute a few years ago. Um, just in, coming to a conclusion, I think um, 
trying to um, cover all these topics in 45 minutes um, is not ideal. And um, often I, I, I do half day workshops trying to cover what we've just covered, but um, here's some good resources. Um, if you want to know how to really you know, um, implement TTT in, your work, in the workplace with data, um, there's a Bridget Williams book, um, More Zeros and Ones. There's a number of chapters in there, um, in, including um, yeah, chapter six, which I wrote. As I said before, the Compedium is on, online. Um, just a few months ago, the EWI Leaders Data Forum um, produced a document, Maori Data Governance Model. Um, I, I think it's, it's really well as a, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a really good document. Um, and yeah, anyone who's looking at involving um, working with Maori data and having a data, data governance set up is to definitely read that book, uh, read, read that paper. Um, but if you already have partnerships with iwi, I, I would suggest um, have an open mind and talk to the iwi first, because um, this data governance model is more designed uh, for crown agencies who don't have relationships. And just um, th this link here, I don't know if people can access it, but I, I think um, it's a really good article just talking about some of the, um, the pros and cons of um, data sovereignty, Maori data sovereignty, um, and where we're at in New Zealand. Um, and again, um, I'm just self-promoting myself here, but um, this book is due out in August. Um, I, I think if you want to um, decolonize your um, research methodologies, and look at um, applying an Indigenous and Māori perspective to um, health research and research in general. Um, the, this book is, um, yeah, it's, I think it's a really amazing book. Um, I, I've um, wrote chapter 10, just going to um, uh, a really deep, intimate detail about why Māori data is a tonga, and it was peer reviewed um, by the editors. So it was, um, so it's written for a non-Maori audience. So um, yeah, so it should be an easy document to um, understand why um, Maori data is a tonga and why we have data sovereignty principles and why it's important. So that's the end for me and I'll just jump off. Korero papaira atu um, ka nui te mahi mahana ki akwe. So thank you so much for that very informative korero. Um, yeah, I've been playing in the Māori data sovereignty stuff after I had to develop some guidelines for the use of big data using the IDI, but um, certainly didn't have to get that in depth. So really, really impressed with that. Um, so we're going to do our best to facilitate questions. Um, Unfortunately, I'm just on my laptop today, and so um, we will do our best. We'll probably start with the chat-based ones, because um, it's probably going to be easier than me trying to scroll among 65 people to see if hands are up. Um, so, Justine, there is a corridor uh, by Emily. Um, in fact, if Emily, um, so she's sort of... Uh, Emily, do you do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? It's typed in the Q and A. Uh, um, it was just a question around the the balance between security and local server data ownership, and I I don't know a lot, but I know of at least two examples of local um, internet providers who have tried have tried to be based in Aotearoa, but then hacks and it's so complicated to keep data secure. And so I had thought the conversation was sort of this balance between the security that you get from huge organizations, say like Microsoft, that can constantly be holding back the hackers with a ton of resources versus having the data here in Aotearoa. So I was just wondering what your thoughts were around that and if there are any plans for uh, Aotearoa based huge server, you know, plantations. I don't quite know the term for them, but mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So I, I'm, I'm not a um, security expert and I'm not affiliated to any one company. So I, I'm just going to 
make that disclaimer. So uh, we, we do have New Zealand cloud server providers. Um, one who's in the media quite often um, is Catalyst Cloud Computing. Um, so they, and I also know we've got a number of other local, uh, there's, there's um, cloud providers in Christchurch and all around. Um, I also know that um, some of the big players, Microsoft, Amazon, um, and others um, are in discussions or already building um, data centers in New Zealand, or they will build data centers in New Zealand. Um, some of those organizations are engaging with Māori about how to um, recognize and implement Māori data sovereignty. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I'm not privy to some of those conversations, but I, yeah, we're, we're definitely here. But my understanding, again, not being a security expert, but my understanding is it's not about the security, it's more about um, costs and um, the workforce and um, access. But um, again, I yeah, that's just a layman's perspective on the security aspect. Thank you. Um, Kia ora. Anuja, are there any more questions in the question and answer? Because I can't answer them, but I have found one here in the chat. Kia ora, Kraitiana. Thanks for an awesome talk. Was interested in your comment that one day Māori data may have legal personhood. What would this look like beyond Māori data sovereignty principles? Sure. Um, so it's, yeah, this is uh, oh, yeah, oh, anyway, oh, kia ora, Anna. It's good to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am not 100% sure, but I, all I know is that the discussions are there, and especially with AI. I, if I just jump to AI, I mean, my opinion is once we have um, an AI with Māori data on it, um, then that AI could essentially become, if you use a tikanga test, <laughs> so any means tikanga test, the AI could be a, hum, a, a Māori. It could um, claim status to be a Māori under New Zealand legislation. So then um, I, I think the AI we could have discussions of an AI um, having legal personhood. And then I think um, Iwi and Hapu and Fano, we need to start having these conversations about how do we actually um, handle this from a Te Ao Māori perspective. Um, you know, some people say, ah, oh, it's just rubbish. I mean, it's just, um, I know one of my colleagues who I can see on screen, I won't mention, will just say, it's just, um, it's all just binary. It's just data. It's, it, you know, you can't have personhood. It's, but then, but yeah, others will say, well, but if it's got Māori data, of course it can be a person. So I think there's going to be lots of really interesting conversations um, happening in the next few years. Um, so, yeah, sorry, it doesn't directly answer the question, but it's, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's going to be a hot topic. <laughs> yeah. I think just to add to that, it'll be absolutely underpinned by whakapapa, and for us, all mm -hmm. things have whakapapa, um, both the seen and the unseen, the intangible. So for Kaitahu, for example, we believe that we descend, or we mm -hmm. whakapapa to Aoraki Mount Cook. Or Aoraki, so as far as we're concerned, personhood or putting that persona on all of those sorts of things that we believe in whakapapa is really important to us. So as long as it has a whakapapa, we could definitely say it has that personhood status. And therefore, um, that's how it would be. Okay, um, again, I can't scroll. I guess I only got five screens to scroll through, but there are no hands up. There is another one, Morena. Uh, Moruna Kraitiana, nice to see you again. Two related questions about Whakapapa and Modi. When I aggregate the data, e.g. compute an average age of data set that has Māori in it, does that mean the age carry Modi and what does this mean for aggregated data offshore? And then similarly, for synthesised data, which has no real people in it, but may have been synthesised from real people. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, so I guess there's two perspectives here. So um, in my personal opinion, uh, all Māori data has a modi, whether it's, um, um, yeah, regardless, because it, it has a fuck, it did come from somewhere. And and you know, from a, my understanding of tikang, you can't just, um, modi just doesn't fall off and disappear because you can't see it. Um, it's always there. But then... Yeah, so, so my opinion is that regardless, it's always there. And then what we know about Modi, if our, if our data is stored overseas, it makes us vulnerable. Uh, um, the health of the individual and the, the groups makes it, it makes them vulnerable. Um, in exactly the same way, um, our, when we talk about repatriation of mokai, of our arts, of our paintings, pictures, et cetera, et cetera, 
um, to me, it's exactly the same principles. Uh, it's just that one is digital and one is physical. So I, I think um, I think it's important that we have a discussion um, and talk about the, some of our traditional knowledge with Modi. Um, and as you say, you know, we can talk about fucker papa. People get fucker papa straight away, but um, we need more in-depth conversations about the Modi. So was there a second part to that question? Oh, I forgot, sorry. You're right, Tiana. Uh, that was my question. So. <laughs> I forget, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you figured, right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we publish in a journal overseas and, you know, we publish aggregated data with means and averages and whatever. Yeah. Um, is the Maori carried into that publication? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so I think, yeah, in my view, it does. And I think that, yeah, I understand, yeah, I mean, from a, a Western perspective, that, you know, you'd argue that it doesn't. But again, I, I think it's important to have those conversations. And yeah, I think it's important, yeah, to have, be open minded. And I, I think the more we understand what Modi is, the, yeah, the, the more in depth these conversations could be. But yeah. again, like, like I said, I, I fully understand that um, it's just data, it's just zeros and ones to some people. But that's, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I'm trying to understand too and with synthesized data mm -hmm. which may, in which there are no real people but the original data had real people yeah. and AI will do this mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. that data you know could in theory be shared with anyone because you'll never identify anyone from that perspective but I'm, I'm interested in um, whether it carries Maori and how that might apply with respect to data sovereignty and storage and other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, I think I mean, there's the two two perspectives. I mean, I, I think yes, um, and I, I strongly believe that my data sovereignty principles still apply. But I also understand, you know, people who don't agree with me. So again, I think um, these those sort of discussions I think are important to keep on having um, because I mean, yeah, this is this is new and. Yeah, but, mm. thank you. I think, um, John, you know, you've, you've talked about the two related questions, the first one being whakapapa, so I think you've absolutely ignored acknowledging the whakapapa of the data, that even though it's been synthesised, it still has come from real people. Yeah. And so when you look at his other um, tikanga that we've talked about, the, the idea of kaitiaki tanga, I guess the onus is on you as the person who is synthesised and using and publishing that data and using it for the good um, as a good kaitiaki or as a good guardian of that data, I guess, um, and acknowledging it's whakapapa and it's modi and that it, because it has of those two things, whether it's been synthesised or not, it's about not causing harm with it to the people that you got it from and to others, I guess, would be something I'd add to that. Um, we have two more questions. Um, if that's okay, the um, and I'll probably call these the last two, and then we'll do karakia to um, finish. So um, Karen has asked, ethical debt is the postponement of addressing certain aspects of tech with ethical implication, implications until after release of the tech for use. How do Māori data sovereignty law and principles address this tendency for re retrospective addressing of ethical issues? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess probably um, this is where co-design comes in, I think. Uh, if you work with um, the people whose data you have and the, the, the collectives and address a way to basically, yeah, heal the past, I guess, would be one suggestion. Um, yeah, because I think, yeah, again, I, I think, you know, the whole concept of Māori data, Māori data sovereignty, it's still relatively new. Uh, when you know, and a lot of people don't actually think about what they're handing over when they hand over their data. So definitely um, engagement with the the stakeholders. Oh, thank you. And she said, "Heal the past." I like that. Thanks. Um, and Monty has a question about matters of Māori data being held in research and restricted access, which I assume he's going to ask. Okay. Yes. Um, kia ora, Karaitiana. Uh, tēnā koe. Um, I. I was uh, further to these discussions that we've just had at this particular point in time, I was just wondering about in terms of data, which has been collected for the purposes of research 
uh, from source from iwi, hapu, and Fano and individuals therein. And then subsequent to that, irrespective of whether it's been synthesized and anonymized, uh, the outcome of that research, which is we presume would have the uh, benefit to to the people who have been researched upon and their associates, mm -hmm. that that data, however, is published in journals behind a paywall, which is only accessible by those people who actually pay that subscription. So, mm -hmm. is this worthy a worthy time to actually start considering those particular aspects, the, the ethics and the morals in terms of research being supposedly being democratized to to Māori? and to the wider general public, but an actual fact being curated by a third party, i.e. a journal publisher? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, so I don't see, well, I, I understand why academics um, publish like that. I, I, I've i seen it, I understand it. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't recognise the, the principle of collective benefit. And um, I think if that can change, that would be ideal. Um, but I don't, I don't have answers how we could do that um, based on what I know. And also, I just seen another question there um, regarding uh, advice regarding uh, Maori and Pacific data. Um, again, I would suggest um, talking to the, the, the recipients. Uh, I mean, because there is, yeah, the Past Africa um, data sovereignty principles and the Maori data sovereignty principles. And in my opinion, they, they complement each other. So I think um, speaking to um, your stakeholders should create a good balance. All right, Kapai. Um, I'm sure we've got a million other questions, but these sessions are only an hour long. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, there's a quick message from Anuj in there just um, to give some feedback on the presentation and the um, co papa today and the, the part, as part of the ACL series to make sure that we're catering um, and facilitating quarterly that are helpful for everybody. Um, Hopefully you can see the chat. There's a thank you in there. Um, you can both gather. Um, so, no data. Um, ka mutu a mato nei kōrero. Uh, pū kōrero mō tēnei rā. Um, kia pai o koutou nei uh, mūtinga o te rā. Um, hoki pai atu i te uh, o koutou nei kāinga. Um, a muri a te mahi mō tēnei rā. Uh, no reira tēnā koutou and I'm just going to do a quick karakia to finish us off and then we can all pop out. So since it's really windy down here, I'm just going to do whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia mā kina kina ki utu, kia mā tara tara ki tai, e hi a ki ana te atakura, um, he teo, he hooker, um, he hauhu, te hei mauri ora. Kia ora everyone.